In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. How wonderful to see so many gathered here today for our celebration of St. Etheldreda, abbess and queen, and without whom, as I was telling children at a service yesterday, without whom none of this would have happened. Um, when she planted her staff here 1,350 years ago, she was the one who had confidence in God's presence and that this presence would be uh, revealed to all by planting a church on this hill uh, that all could see and that what became has become the ship of the Fen. And we, we're delighted, very delighted indeed, that uh, Archbishop Stephen is, is here with us today. It's a great honor and pleasure to have you here with us, Father. And, and, and wonderful that we can, in this, in this glorious sunshine, celebrate the faith of Etheldreda and rejoice that we still are served by her prayers in heaven. And as we come to this great celebration, we prepare ourselves by confessing our sins. Since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, looking to Jesus in penitence and faith. Lord, you are gracious and compassionate. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are loving to all and your mercy is over all your creation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Your faithful servants bless your name and speak of the glory of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
Let us pray. Almighty God, by whose grace Ethelreda, kindled with the fire of your love, became a burning and shining light in the church, inflame us with the same spirit of discipline and love, that we may ever walk before you as children of light, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. from the first letter of Peter. Rid yourselves, therefore, of all malice, of all guile, insincerity, envy, and all slander. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But who, for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. This is the Gospel of the Lord. The first letter of St. Peter, chapter 2 and verse 9. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. Uh, sisters and brothers, could I say first of all uh, what a great joy it is to be with you today on this great anniversary. A joy to be in this beautiful Cathedral Church of Ely. Um, a joy to be here alongside my dear brother Stephen on almost the last lap uh, of his journey as your bishop and as he prepares uh, to move slightly north to Lincoln, not, not, not far enough north to reach the real promised land of the northern province, <laughs> but getting there, getting there. Uh, and a joy also, since the dean is also an old dear fri friend of mine, uh, to be here alongside him but alongside all of you. Uh, I thank God for Stephen's very faithful ministry as bishop here, for all that Mark does, and for your witness to the gospel in this diocese. Like I'm sure many, many preachers before me, in fact, probably every preacher for the last 1,350 years, I do have to confess to find myself struggling to find a way of explaining how Ethel's reader's commitment to remain a virgin while married has helpful things to say to us today. Or yesterday, for that matter. Uh, even the Church of England's thorough examination of human sexuality has not dealt with this issue. Yet, moreover, having demonstrated such radical faithfulness to her chastity, 
It also seems particularly unfair that the tumour on her neck from which she died was put down to the wearing of necklaces in her youth. Surely this is one saint who really cannot be accused of vanity. And no, much of her life doesn't make much sense to us today, and yet, and yet, founder of a double monastery, that is a monastery for men and women, radically committed to God even when it meant leaving her marriage, she can still speak to us across the centuries about what it means to follow Christ in a world where not following him appears so much more sensible and attractive. Of course, it wasn't the necklaces that caused the tumours. It was the plague. And while I don't suppose any of us can fail to be sympathetic to her husband, nor his rather remarkable patience with his rather too chaste wife, she does say something powerful to us about what I'm going to call primary vocation. The vocation upon which all other vocations depend. That the purpose of our lives, as the Westminster Catechism so famously put it, is to glorify and enjoy God forever. You are the light of the world, says Jesus in today's rather surprising gospel reading, though because we've heard these words so many times, perhaps we are no longer surprised by them. Shouldn't it be the other way round? Jesus is surely the light of the world, not us. Jesus, the light that banishes darkness. Jesus Christ, the bright morning star, we follow him. But now, from his lips, as so often seems to be the case, and just when we thought we were beginning to work things out, something disturbing, something unexpected, as Seamus Heaney puts it in his beautiful poem, Pilgrimages, he's such a fast God always leaving as we arrive, just as we think we've got him worked out, he has moved on. So he says, not I am the light of the world, but you, you are to be the light that shines. And then, wasn't the city set on the hill that we aspire to and look towards? Isn't that Jerusalem, the holy city, the place where God dwells? And now, equally unnerving, we are told that city is us. We are the light. We are the city. We are the building. We are the place where God is visible. Ethel's reader, and all the saints, however provocative, alarming, surprising, and disturbing their stories are, point in this one direction that the light that shone so brightly in the face of Jesus Christ now can shine in us, that we, with our unveiled faces, reflecting the glory that we see, are being transformed, changed, changed into the beautiful likeness of the Jesus we see and receive. We celebrate 
the 1,350th anniversary of Ethelreda today and the foundation of the abbey upon which this great cathedral church is built, but the story it tells, the song it sings, is of lives transformed, of the pursuit of holiness, so much so that we gathered here this morning are the inheritors of the promise that the light of Jesus Christ can shine and be radiant in the lives of those who follow him, what we might call luminous Christianity. And just for a moment, think of the people, those who have made Christ visible in your life, the unsung, faithful, godly heroes of your life and your parish church and a hundred parish churches. Did not these people have about them a translucence and a radiance so simply to be in their presence was to come close to God. And the beautiful, astonishing thing about the Christian story is that by God's Holy Spirit, this is available to all of us. And it is certainly the way the world and all its peoples so mired in darkness, difficulty, compromise and confusion, all the horrors and injustices that beset our world and all its glorious opportunities for service and for witness. This is how people will find us. It is because our light will shine that having given ourselves to dwell closely in the presence of Christ, to feed on his word and be fed by the iron rations of the sacrament, we are changed. And in finding us and seeing Christ in us, people find and see Christ. Our light shines as it shone in the radical and challenging discipleship of Ethel's reader, so it will shine in us, and sisters and brothers, it will be very beautiful. The Blessed wrote W. H. Auden in his wonderful poem in praise of limestone says this, the Blessed won't care what angle they are viewed from for they have nothing to hide. The true and astonishing beauty of a transparent and a translucent life. Now, of course, I speak to you as one who is a million miles away from this. I talk a good game. But it is what I long for for myself and for the church I serve so that the world may believe. And beautiful, beautiful Ely Cathedral. I'm on message, I did my homework, I read your website. Joyfully proclaiming the love of God in worship, outreach, welcome and care. That's your strap line. And with your beautiful, beautiful lantern tower almost floating in the gentle landscape of the Fens, I need to remind you, you are not the city set on a hill. You are not the new Jerusalem. That is a joy and privilege reserved for us because of our baptism into Christ, called to do in our day 
what Ethel's reader did in hers, through compassionate, committed, radical discipleship, through following Jesus and allowing by the Spirit his light to inhabit us. And may that Spirit sustain us and gloriously shine out from us the best advertisement for the gospel. In fact, the only one that works beautiful, beautiful holiness. And this week, back in York, where I'm seeing those I will be ordaining as deacon next weekend, through my door on Wednesday afternoon came such a picture of grace. Someone whose tenacious, tenacious gospel faithfulness and fiercely wrought simplicity shone brightly with the light of Christ, filled my study with joy and in whose presence I felt blessed. Not Ethel's reader, born again, as it might be romantically tempting to wonder, especially today, but Christ, present and visible in those who follow him. Christ, rebuilding his church with the bricks and mortars of our lives. We, the living stones, being built into a spiritual house, which is why, because this is what we need and this is the only thing we need. For the Church of England in these 2020s, we have a vision. It is the most incredibly obvious thing anyone could ever say about the Church, and it is so endlessly profound, we will spend our lifetimes plumbing its depths. We are called to be a Christ-centred and a Jesus Christ-shaped Church. I was talking about, I mean, like most preachers, I've only got one sermon. I, 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 I do actually, um, I do actually, every time I sit down to write a sermon, I really do intend to write a new one. That is always my intention. But like most preachers, I just end up writing the same one again. Endless variations on the theme that the gospel is beautiful and that the gospel can change our lives. And when our lives change, the world changes. But I was speaking about this on another occasion a few weeks ago, um, about how we need to dwell in the presence of Christ and be changed by Christ. And, and after the service, somebody came up to me and said, so, so how long does that take? I was able to give them a precise answer. I said, it takes exactly one lifetime which by happy coincidence is exactly how much time each one of us has got. One lifetime to know Christ and to serve Christ and to be God's presence in the world. So dear people of Ely Diocese, please do not hide your light under a bucket. Don't be so stupid as to kindle a light and then squirrel it away. Let your light shine. Oh, and wonder and delight at this glorious revelation of goodness and hope, goodness and hope in a world of so much need. Shout it from the rooftops, crack open the champagne, put on your dancing shoes, throw caution to the wind, celebrate, shuck an awful lot of oysters, send out for large amounts of curry, strike up the band and turn up the volume. Rejoice! Christ is risen. He has raised up his servant Ethel's reader, and on the foundations of her life and ministry then, we receive 
and celebrate the life of Christ now. And we are called to follow in the way of Christ that she followed, so that in the particularity and circumstances of our lives, we too might sing his song of joy and peace. It is what our world is longing for. Amen. together in faith. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. We believe in God the Father who created all things, for by his will they were created and have their being. We believe in God the Son who was slain, for with his blood he purchased us for God from every tribe and language from every people and nation. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit. The Spirit and the Bride say, come. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, as we remember across the centuries the life and witness of Ethelreda and of this place which she founded, we pray for all those throughout the world who today are now the living stones which make up your church. We hold before God all those whom Christ calls to follow him. We pray for all leaders, for Stephen, our bishop, Dagmar, bishop of Huntingdon, and for Archbishops Justin and Stephen. In the cathedral community, we pray today for the members of the Order of Ethelreda and the friends of the cathedral, and for all who support and encourage the ministry of worship, outreach, welcome, and care. With the wider diocese, we pray for all parishes which look to Ely, especially today, with the St. Neots ministry team. O oh God, our Father, as we pray for your blessing to rest upon the whole church, help us to be the kind of church that is needed for the challenges of life today. We pray that through your Holy Spirit, you will renew us, your people, as one body in your Son, and equip us with your gifts for shared love and service. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord of all, we are reminded how Ethelreda chose to be a dedicated servant of Christ and her community, above being mistress of an earthly court. And so we pray for all those in positions of power in our world, that they too may ably balance the demands of their role with a high notion of service. And so we pray for Charles, our King, for the government, and for all those whose decisions at national and regional levels affect the futures of many, that they may be encouraged to work for real peace and enduring justice. We pray for the rebuilding of damaged communities and the renewal of the life of the earth. We pray especially this day for all nations torn by disaster or conflict, for Ukraine, for Sudan, for the millions who are driven from their homes as refugees, and for all others whom we know but distantly, yet whose plight burdens our hearts. Heavenly Father, may each leader with earthly power and each of us in our own way answer your call to be as light in the darkness of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
the community of Ely grew up around Etheldreda's monastery. And so we pray for the community life of Ely and for all villages, towns and cities represented here. We uphold in our prayers all those people, elected, employed and volunteers, who work hard at a local level to support their neighbours in times of both celebration and of need. We pray for all those in our society who feel they are struggling in these uncertain times. May they not be forgotten by us or left bereft. Gracious God, who bids us to love one another, inspire us who are here now to go out into our world to work together for change so that all in our communities may be enabled to thrive and to live life in all its fullness. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. We turn to you, O Lord, in sickness and in health, to remember those who we know who are suffering in body, mind, or spirit. We pray for those who stand alongside others as carers and companions, often feeling helpless and exhausted. Renew and empower them, that they may know they are not alone. We pray for all those who work in the medical and caring professions, that they may be supported and valued, just as they support and value your people. Lord Jesus, we ask you to bring your healing touch where any are sick, anxious, or in misery. Surround them with your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we remember the past, we commit to the future. Lord of eternity, you are the God of the dead as well as of the living. In affection and confidence, we remember those throughout the centuries who have gone before us and those known and loved by us whom we see no more. Bring us with them all to the joy of your home in heaven. Rejoicing in the communion of Etheldreda and all the saints, we commend ourselves and one another and all of our lives to God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are fellow citizens with the saints and all the household of God, through Christ our Lord, who came and preached peace to those who were far off and those who were near. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
accept the gifts we bring to your table on this feast of St. Ethelreda. Free us from the things that keep us from you and teach us to seek you in, as our only good. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and good, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. This day we honor you in St. Ethelreda, who consecrated her life to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. In her you show us your saving love as you call the human race back to its first holiness and invite us to taste on earth the gifts of the world to come. In communion with angels and archangels and all who served you on earth and worship you now in heaven, we raise our voice to proclaim your glory, forever praising you and singing. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. 
grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for all upon the, for the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of th praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
I heard the voice of a great multitude crying, Alleluia, the Lord our God has entered into his kingdom. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
we give thanks and praise to the God who called Ethel Reader to follow him through the trials and blessings of her life as we mark the 1350th anniversary of her founding of this house of prayer. We pray that God will strengthen us with the same spirit of dedication and purpose so we too may shine like lights in our own generation to his honor and glory. You have been my help, O Lord, and a strong tower in my defense. Merciful God, who gave us such grace to your servant Ethel Dreda, that she served you with singleness of heart and loved you above all things. Help us whose communion with you has been renewed in this sacrament to forsake all that holds us back from following Christ and to grow into his likeness from glory to glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God give you grace to follow the Blessed Virgin Mary, Ethel Dreda, and all his saints in faith and hope and love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ.